Hello world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. It is my privilege, delight, to welcome you to Wow, What a Show. I am Phyllis, the host, and this is the live podcast outreach of Rehoboth Institute of the Arts. One day I'm going to talk in detail about just what that means, but for now, it is, for our understanding, a concept, a collective of artists working together to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, however we may decide to do so. And um, as we grow, many things will will seed out of us. Many things have, as a matter of fact, and we're going to just continue as the Lord decides we should. Okay, so, so you know, I am um, all hooked up now, and I hope you are ready to go. This evening, we are going to talk about, read the first four chapters of the book of the Revelation. As I have explained in the past, we are going to begin studying through the book of the Revelation Monday, uh, I think that's the 11th of um, March, the month we're in, and uh, we're going to be graced with a very, very knowledgeable person, and that would be Dr. Larry Kilson. He'll be coming to support us in our desire to learn more about this prophetic book. So I hope you will put on your seat belts along with us and uh, take this journey, take this ride. It's going to be, I believe, one of revelation, just like the title of the book. And we're going to uh, learn a great deal. I do uh, I pray that we will learn an awful lot. It's time for us to really consider all that God is doing in the last days. Now, my understanding of the last days, and yours may be different, are all those days that have uh, followed the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that um, there are many things that should be accomplished before his second return. And many of those things have been accomplished. And that's what the book of the Revelation uh, is, is God's message to us. He's you know, making us aware of those things that shall happen and things that will come. And so, we are not caught off guard. Uh, the Lord said indeed that we wouldn't be, that we're his friends and that he lets his friends know what he's doing. So with that, be grateful as I am, I'm sure you are, that he thought him enough of us to give us the, um, the preceding warning so that we are not caught off guard just like that and we can look forward to the great and wonderful and marvelous appearing of Jesus Christ. He is coming. He truly is going to return. And, you know, I was thinking about that today as I spoke with a young person about uh, being disappointed in things that we pray for and, and the Lord doesn't give them to us, right? When we're young, we think he should just give us whatever we pray for because we're looking upward in life. We are looking towards the rise of, of the expectations of youth. You know, we don't have a lot of experience and we don't have a lot of understanding. So you start to pray and um, there are difficult and tough moments come and we are expecting that God will deliver us out of those things because we ask him to do so, right? But you know, God has a way of working with his children. Once we are born again, his way is to raise you into a maturity that makes you look more like Jesus Christ. And if you look at the life of, if we look at the life of Jesus Christ, we'll see that the things that we would have prayed for, that God would deliver us from, Jesus never did. We pray that people will know our names and we'll be greatly, you know, um, esteemed for the great things that we do. Success, that we get money, that we have great friends, that we have a good time, 
that we never ha has suffer at all and that all things you know should just be as we want them well it's understandable because we are what blind we cannot see except with the eye and the things that are directly around us within the periphery and the forward you know uh what is it traveling of the sight that's that's the best we can do but god sees not only that he sees what passed what's gone he sees what will come he sees the very next step we are going to take and he knows every decision we're going to make he also knows the outcome of those things so in the Lord not providing everything that we ask for when we're young, as you age and wait and see and learn more about him and spend more time in his word, letting his word unfold and give you wisdom, give me wisdom, you, all of us, right? We cannot be grateful because we don't know what he's kept us from. And so we go our merrily, on our merrily way, you know, merry ways, and we do what we want to do pretty much. And we fall into great difficulty. And we are aware of that difficulty because the difficulty is out of choices that we make in blindness. And so we suffer. And there are some natural sufferings that come with life itself because we're living in a fallen world and people are without understanding. It isn't just you or me, it's everybody. <laughs> Can you imagine? I think Jesus Christ uh, told a, a parable and he said it was like the blind leading the blind in one reference there. I can't remember exactly what it was, but that's really kind of what's happened. Well, not kind of, that is it. We're a bunch of dead men walking. And amongst us, there are those of us who have been made alive. And so we have to grasp and understand the very thing that made us alive. And that comes with faith, belief, trust. These are the words that become very meaningful to us after we've lived a while and we see how God moves and operates. And remember, Jesus never prayed to be delivered from his sufferings, and his sufferings were greater than yours or mine. And he was touched with the feeling of all of our infirmities. So we don't have a high priest who doesn't understand. He does, and he knows. So I say to all of you who are young, hold fast. Because as you grow in Christ, you're going to come to understand. And so we are reading from the book of the Revelation. And I said, Dr. Kilson is coming. And I want to just introduce you a little bit to who he is. Um, he is better known amongst friends and those people who have met him before as Elder Kil Kilson or Brother Kilson. I kind of like that. I like the elder part because he has a great testimony, one which he'll tell in his own time, in his own way. I don't tell other people's testimony, except they're not around to tell them at all themselves. Why? Because the power and the impact is in their telling it. The witness is from them, and uh, it will sound uh, as spectacular as it is, but it will also be true, and those who hear will know it. And uh, so Dr. Kilson is a man who does not uh, come to you and say, well, he never did anyway to, to me, I am Dr. Kilson. He comes as a brother, and I really appreciate that. He's very kind. And he was called to the altar of the Lord where he prayed the prayer of faith in May of 1990. He was aided by Bishop Milton C. Granham at New Covenant Church of Philadelphia. And funny, you know, I didn't know uh, Elder Kilson then, but I know Dr. Granham. He was actually, that church was the, um, 
the, the brother church or sister church of the church I was attending. And Dr. Granham was a, or I think he passed away, a very learned man, a man of great uh, uh, knowledge with regards to God's word. And so Dr. Kilson has been uh, with some great folks here, in, at least those who study the word. That's what I mean when I say great. And um, he says that Jesus saved and delivered him from deep, deep darkness at the time and ushered him into God's glorious light. You see, this is what I'm saying. The testimony of the, the believer, oh my goodness, we know the witness is in us because we are the ones who've been changed. And so when we stand up and we tell someone else about it, we tell it in the sincerity and with the humility that comes from knowing an almighty, most powerful, all loving, good, and, and caring God that our God is. And we know that our transformation came by way of faith in the redemptive work of Jesus Christ on the cross and the resurrection, most miraculous resurrection of him as God called him back to conquer death and to establish eternal life. I see all of you here. Good evening. So I'm so glad you just make my heart glad. I thank the Lord for each one of you. And we're going to begin uh, with a few notes. I'm just going to read some notes from the Bible that I study in and have had it for, oh my gosh, I've had this Bible for about 45 years. Ooh, telling my age, but that's the truth. The Bible was a gift from a pastor friend of mine and I can read other Bibles, but this Bible has traveled with me through the years, and it is like a good friend. And I am um, just going to read a couple of notes here to introduce us to the book. But first, let us ask our Father to guide us and direct us tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are ever so grateful that we know you. And for those who may be listening who don't yet know you, Father, I ask that our witness and this reading will impress them such that they will want to discover this truth for themselves. And Lord, as much as we are the witnesses, everyone comes because you draw them. It is not in our power to do so. We simply can testify of those things which you have done for us and the witness that we have in us to believe that which you have done by experience we come to know it. And so, Lord, the same way you touched us with truth and awakened us to life and healed us from blindness and caused us, Lord God, to be no longer deaf but to hear and to have, Lord God, a straightened gate that we may walk in the way. God, we ask the same for all those who may hear, not just us, but any other person in witness. You supernaturally, Lord God, draw them to yourself. We pray for the salvation of anyone, Lord God, who seeks you. And if we could, for the entire world, if it were ordained that everyone should be saved, our prayer is with you in that, my Lord. Do what you do most effectively. Draw men to yourself and then bless us, those who have come, that we will continue to grow and hear your spirit and be a focus and aware and keep our eyes set on those things, Father, which we have heard and know to be true from you by your spirit, walking with us day out. And Lord God, for the sick and for the troubled and those, Lord God, who are young and have yet not to understand and they are grasping, God, you alone can do it. And we know that you can. So we thank you because everyone that seeks you, you said, if they seek with all the heart, 
they will surely find you. Hallelujah. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. We praise and bless you and thank you as we offer this our petition in the blessed and eternal name of Jesus Christ forever and ever. We thank you, Lord God. Amen. Okay, so all I want to really say is that this book, the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ to John, was given to John, and he is you know, save the those who think otherwise, but he is the author. His name will be mentioned as we read through it. And the theme of the book is the apocalypse, and it is a book of prophecy. It particularly emphasizes the repeated and increasingly violent worldwide attempts led by Satan to oppose and prevent the execution of the declared intention of Christ to establish, establish his kingly rule on earth. It makes clear this conflict is certain to end in the complete overthrow of those things that are evil, those forces and the establishment of the everlasting kingdom of Christ. This age long conflict terminates in the final judgment at the great white throne, the appearance of the new Jerusalem and the beginning of eternity. Oh, I almost, almost a direct quote from the open Bible in the prelude to the book of the Revelation. It is true. We know that evil has fought hard and long against the ways of God. The Bible gives us that history, so we know it. But we also know, and we know by the revealing of Christ in us by the Spirit of God, that these words, I thank my God, Paul wrote them, that through Christ Jesus, I am always victorious, right? We know that the Lord will triumph. God is the sovereign ruler and his power greater than any. So with that, we will begin to read chapter one. Now, for those of you who are in the uh, listening audience, if anyone wants to join me in the reading tonight, I would surely appreciate it. Already, I'm very dry. I've had a cold, and so I tend to get really dry in my mouth, and I didn't bring water tonight. I forgot to, but here we go. Uh, we pray that the Lord would get me through this. Okay, the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and with every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God 
and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus and unto Smyrna and unto Pergamos and unto Thyatira and unto Sardis and unto Philadelphia and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he said in his right hand, he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the kings of hell and of death. Write these things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand, and the gold, seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks, which thou sawest are the seven churches. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou try them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and has borne, and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored, and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. But this thou hast that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans which I also hate. He that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God, and unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you in prison, that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. But be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. And to the angel of the church of Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. 
but I have a few things against thee because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things offered to sacrifices unto idols, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrines of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the God, the Son of God, who hath eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I give her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children unto death, with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you, I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which you have already, hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received my father, and I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Revelation chapter 3. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, these things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. But be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot, blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father, and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. 
Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man may take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and as am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. And we come to the fourth chapter of the book of the Revelation. And my Bible labels this one, a vision of heaven. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald, emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion and the second beast like a calf. And the third beast had a face as a man and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne 
and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Glory to God. Oh, what a high note to end the reading tonight. What a high note. Hallelujah. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they were created. What an awesome reading, right? That the Lord took John. He was exiled. He was being persecuted to this isle called Patmos. And let me tell you, under the stress of great tribulation and trial, which we have not experienced, but we think we have. I know I thought I was going through a great uh, uh, trial uh, when the Lord began to really uh, teach me, deal with me. Oh my goodness, what a great and marvelous time. And uh, I, John was there, right, in the midst of this persecution. And can you imagine the fasting and the praying and the waiting and the praying? And then God, in his wonderful, wonderful mercy, loving kindness, just begins to talk to you, to show you, to open it up to us, to reveal himself in ways that we never thought we could understand him. And he does it. He does it. And then you are sealed. And you know you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And you know that the promise that he speaks to us, that he has all things that God has given him and he will not lose, not one. And in his prayer, he prayed for us so that we are kept by him. Oh, I praise him and I thank him. And I hope you do the same. I pray that you have had a witness such that you will never, ever not know that God has touched and changed your life, made us new. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Teach us, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you all for coming and sharing with us tonight. Uh, I see Tony Ritchie, hello, and Rabbi in the live studio, Light Touch and Teeny. And uh, there is one message here. Glory to God, hallelujah, and amen. Absolutely. I pray that you have received from this bounty of the Lord that the table that he set before us tonight had on it those delectables that were good for the nourishment of your spirit and delectable to your taste, that you taste it here and you see how good the Lord is. Bless you. We will meet again Monday night at eight o'clock and uh, at which time I will uh, have posted an outline on the book of the Revelation and I hope you can get it. And if you want the full resource that Dr. Kilson has prepared for us, you can get that too, just by you know typing your email actually in the chat, or I've given my email and I will give it again uh, right now so that you can see it. If you send to P E, I'm sorry, wrong one. I'm a Phyllis, Y L L I S, Phyllis at rehobothinstitute.org. I will see to it that you get this uh, very, very, uh, it's, it's quite a good resource. Dr. Kilson is giving us a lot. You know, the, the saints of God are excited to share what they have learned and what, you know, God is teaching us. We want to share it. We want to do it in such a way as to appoint all people to Christ. We want to do it also so that the struggles that we 
go through as saints together here, we can help did that help you? You know, I can I can show you what he did for me in a particular situation. You can tell me what he did for you. We encourage one another and we are strengthened by our fellowship. And that's why I podcast. That's why this podcast exists to fellowship in ways when we are admonishing and exhorting and in encouraging and lifting one another up and teaching, sharing. Not that you don't know what I have to teach or what I want to say. You probably know that and a lot more, which is why I invite anyone who has a heart to uh, be in fellowship with others to send me an email if you want to do a presentation here. You know, we are the body of Christ. And if we are the body of Christ, we love one another as we love the Lord and as he has loved us. So I hope that the meal suited you beautifully tonight. I hope that you have received, and I do hope and pray that you'll join us again when Dr. Kilson joins us Monday evening at eight o'clock right here. God bless you and with uh, his blessings, we depart. And I pray that you have a wonderful and peaceful rest of your day and weekend. Take good care. And for some reason, we have no volume. I do not understand that at all. I don't know what's going on. How about that? Hmm. Maybe my um